Now today we will start with the fifth physiographic division of India that is the coastal plain. The Great Plateau is flanked by narrow coastal strips on both west and east sides along the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal respectively. These are commonly known as the West Coastal Plain and the East Coastal Plain. So first there is on the western side we have the West Coastal Plain and on the eastern side we have the East Coastal Plain. So to understand the West Coastal Plain and the East Coastal Plain we first have a look at the map of India below the Tropic of Cancer that is the southern part of India. This we can draw as a Tropic of Cancer which divides India almost into two equal halves. So as we have a look at the West Coastal Plain, it lies between the Western Ghats. Earlier we have studied that this was the Western Ghats. These were the Western Ghats. On Western side of India we have the Arabian Sea. And in the east we have the Bay of Bengal. So we can see that the west coastal plain it lies between the western Ghats and the Arabian Sea. So this part we can mark as the western coastal plain. This region it is the western coastal plain. It lies between the western Ghats and the Arabian Sea coast and spreads from Gujarat and to Kanyakumari. This is the southern point of India. This is the Kanyakumari. It is a narrow plain with an average width of 64 kilometers. Going from north to south, it goes on narrowing. The plain it is divided. Plain it is divided into three parts. The northern part from Mumbai to Goa, it is known as the Konkan. The middle part is called the Kannad plain, while the southern part up to Kanyakumari is known as the Malabar Plain. So for our understanding we can mark on the map Konkan Plain or the Konkan region. This we can mark as Konkan extending from Mumbai to Goa. To the extreme south we can mark here the Malabar Coast. And in the center we have the Kannad Plain. This is the Kannad plain. Konkan is 50 to 80 kilometers wide and is characterized with estuaries while Malabar is characterized with lagoons and black waters. Lagoons are salt water lakes separated from the main sea by sandbars and pits. Kochi it is located on a lagoon. So we can write some of the points of the western coastal plain. The first point is it extends between the Western Ghats and the Arabian Sea. Or we can say that it extends from Gujarat to Kanyakumari. It has an average width of 64 kilometers. Average width is 64 kilometers. The northern part from Mumbai to Goa is known as Konkan. The middle part is called the Kannar Plain. While the southern part up to Kanyakumari is known as the Malabar Plain. Student of geography should know these general names of the coast of southern India. Konkan is 50 to 80 kilometers wide and characterized with estuaries or we can say that Konkan has a characteristic feature of the presence of estuaries where the Malabar coast it is characterized 
by the presence of lagoons and black waters and back waters lagoons you can write that these are the salt water lakes separated from the main sea by sandbars and spits kochi it is located on a lagoon now we come to the eastern coastal plain although the bay of bengal there extends a comparatively wide and level plain from odisha to the kanyakumari known as the east coastal plain it becomes broader in tamil nadu where it is 100 to 200 kilometers wide it narrows down in the north of godavari where it is only 32 kilometers wide it has two parts northern and the southern similarly we have done the division of the western coastal plain in this case there are only two divisions the northern part between the mahanadi and the krishna is northern sarkar plain and the southern part between the krishna and the kaveri is koromandal or the karnatic plain so on the map we can draw these two rivers here we can draw the river mahanadi this is the course of river mahanadi here it is the river krishna and to the south we have the river kaveri this is the river kaveri so we can write that the northern part between the mahanadi and the krishna this is known as the northern sarkar plain this region is known as the northern sarkar plain and the southern part between the krishna and kaveri it is known as the koromandal or the karnataka plain this region this is known as the koromandal plain koromandal plain it is also known as the karnataka plain the mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri are major rivers which originate from the great plateau and form deltas at their mouth delta is formed by the deposition of the sediment brought by the rivers a chain of bars is found along the coast that has given birth to numerous lagoons the chilka and the pulikat present a good example of lagoon one can find the chilka lake it is in urissa it is approximate location of the chilka lake it is in urissa and one can also find the pulikat lake in andhra pradesh here we can find the pulikat lake it is in andhra pradesh chilka lake it is in urissa and pulikat lake it is in andhra pradesh so now we can write some of the important features of the eastern coastal plain it becomes broader in tamil nadu where it is 100 to 200 kilometers wide it becomes broader in tamil nadu where it is 100 to 200 kilometers wide it has two parts northern part is known as the northern sarkar while the southern part is known as the koromandal coast a chain of bars is found along the coast that has given birth to numerous lagoons example the chilka lake it is in urissa and the pulikat lake in andhra pradesh so one can easily remember the difference between the west coastal plain and the east coastal plain the west coastal plain is located between the western ghats and the arabian sea coast on the contrary the east coastal plain it is located between the eastern ghats and the coast of bay of bengal west coastal plain it is narrow and has an average width of 64 km while the east coastal plain they are comparatively broader and have an average width of 80 to 100 km 
In case of the west coastal plain, it is drained by several short and swift streams which are unable to form the deltas. But in the case of east coastal plain, as we have just now seen that big rivers like Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri, they have formed the large deltas. Deltas are the deposition features of the activity of the river course. In the west coastal plain, there are several lagoons especially in the southern part of this plain. And though lagoons are also present in the east coastal plain, but they are comparatively less in number. The western plain has identified coast which, which supports many ports. Now we come to the last feature that is the islands. Besides mainland, Indian territory also extends into the Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal in the form of Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands respectively. So we have the Lakshadweep Islands and second we have the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Lakshadweep Islands, these are small coral islands and none of them is more than a couple of square kilometers in area. The Andaman and Nicobars are also a cluster of islands stretched almost in a line. This is the major difference between Andaman and Nicobar Islands and the Lakshadweep Islands. It is also said that Andaman and Nicobar Islands are an elevated portion of submarine mountains. While in the case of Lakshadweep Islands, we can say that it is uh, have these are coral in origin. So Lakshadweep Islands, these are coral in origin. While the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, these are supposed to be an elevated portion. There are as many as 200 islands in the Andaman group alone extending from 350 kilometers. There are 19 islands in the Nicobar group. Some of the islands extend from 60 to 100 kilometers forming a cluster south of the Andaman group. India's only active volcano is found on barren islands which is in the Andaman and Nicobar group of islands. So this point it is important to remember that India's only active volcano is found on barren island in Andaman and Nicobar group of islands. So this is all for this chapter. After going through this chapter, students should be able to solve some of the questions. For example, question number one. What is a dune? This we have already done. Give some examples. From the Himalayan region, question number two, what is a bhavar? Give two important characteristics of a bhavar belt. This we have also done. Third question is, what do you understand by the term doak? After answering such questions, in each question, students should mention two or three examples of the Indian subcontinent. Fourth question is, write short note on Arabi. And also, students should be able to solve the questions. For example, distinguish between the Western Himalayas and the Eastern Himalayas. Mm -hmm. Similarly, distinguish between the Ganga Delta and the Indus Delta. Distinguish between Bhabar and Tarai region or Bhangar and Khadar also. Next is distinguish between the Western Ghats and the Eastern Ghats. And another is the distinguish between the East Coastal Plain and the West Coastal Plain. Students should answer such questions with the aid of the map of India. Students should have a free hand drawing practice of the map so that you can score good marks. That is all for this chapter.